people come to us because uh, usually they're stuck in some shape or form in terms of where they are, in terms of their growth, in terms of wanting to grow to the next level. Uh, sometimes people come to us because they want to acquire or merge with another company, uh, don't know how to do it or don't know, how, don't know how to get the funding. And so that's where we get involved. Hi there, I'm Cynthia Deeran and welcome to Business Beyond Borders. On this show, I unlock the secrets of international business success. So how do you grow your business at home or overseas when you don't have the money to invest, you don't have the contacts and you don't really have the knowledge about how to do it? It's a big question. Today, we're going to tackle part of it. And I'm going to be talking to Brian Santos, an investment banker with Difference. Brian helps businesses to grow at home and abroad, and he does it by taking a holistic approach to solving the challenges faced by international companies. We're going to be chatting about how to grow your company, even when it seems as though you don't have the resources to do so. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Now, look, today we are talking about strategic investment and mm -hmm. uh, in particular strategic investment for companies that are looking at going global. But before we get there, let's talk a bit about you. What got you into the field of strategic investment and how long have you been helping people to find investment for their projects? Yeah, good question. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of been a natural progression for me uh, in terms of how I got into, into what I'm doing at the moment. I mean, my whole career has been based around helping businesses grow. I love doing it and I've always been entrepreneurial and creative in terms of finding uh, solutions to problems of, uh, of business owners. And, and the thing is, so often we're taught about how to, uh, sorry, what to think, I shouldn't be saying, we're more about what to think uh, from our schooling, even when we go to business school and even when we go into employment in our own businesses. Uh, but we're, we're, we're usually not taught about how to think uh, and how to even question some of the things that we've been taught or how they've been kind of made us to uh, made for us to think a certain way and strategic investment is kind of been uh, I guess like I said like a natural progression for me in terms of how I think and how I've been helping businesses along the way I remember reading like a, a you know a crazed man in terms of finding you know people who would think like me and, and in the entrepreneurial world who would find solutions to problems that kind of uh, weren't the norm and it led me to uh, to a guy called Gordon Bazaar uh, who ended up mentoring me and I did some of his programs and he's been a wonderful uh, ally and friend and colleague of mine and and he's actually the founder and CEO of National Diversified Funding Corporation and we've been working together properly uh, for, for at least five plus years now and and um, so yeah in terms of I guess what what we do it, 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 it's kind of been a, a progression from how we originally started in just helping businesses generally speaking yeah. Just tell me a bit about uh, NDFC, National Diversified Funding Corporation. Is it an Australian company? Sure. Is so it? Because I know it's multinational. And what does it do exactly? Yeah, great question. So National Diversified Funding Corporation, like I said, was is founded and uh, headed by uh, Gordon Bazaar, who uh, created this business or had this business since the late 60s. And uh, our, our specialty, what we do is basically help businesses grow and mainly we do it by mergers and acquisitions uh, uh, advisory. We help to raise capital and, uh, and I guess, match uh, business owners with the right solutions. And whether it be funding, whether it be debt, whether it be equity, or whether it be, like I said, advisory based uh, work that we do, we, um, that's kind of in a nutshell what we do. So it, it doesn't, it's not like a, an easy thing to explain because each business has their own situations, but essentially, what we do is we help businesses grow mainly through capital raising and mergers and acquisitions. So there are a lot of people out there in that capital raising space, in that investor matching space. Yes. And lots of people will tell you different things about it, but there are some general trends, I guess you'd call them in the way that people go about that work. Yeah. Can you give us an idea of what that looks like and also how what you do is different from that generic investor matching piece? Yeah. 
so you're right. There is a lot of people out there in terms of uh, who are involved in the investment world. You've got a lot of people who are, you know, who range from the angel investors and, and venture capital firms to private equity firms. And you've got some guys who are, who are like us involved in investment banking. We're essentially the matchmakers to a degree, the brokers in the middle men and women who kind of make the deals happen. Uh, and in terms of what we do that's different is, I guess when you say investor matching, the first thing that kind of pops into my head is that we're already uh, assuming that a business needs an investor to solve a certain problem. And when you go to you know, a private equity firm or, or someone who already has the funding capabilities, you're already going to them and saying, I need your help. Uh, it's almost like going to a doctor and you've had a, had a cough for two or three weeks and you say, doc, I need an antibiotic to sort my illness out. And it would be irresponsible and, and uh, of the doctor to say, yes, you're right, and start prescribing a you know, prescription uh, for the antibiotic without actually doing any examination on you whatsoever. So when you say investor matching, it's kind of the same thing. It's assuming that you know what your, what your solution is. And so the right people, I guess what we do is before we kind of assume that the problem is investment, we take several steps back uh, because often what happens is it's not just a, I need money or, or it is often a money situation, but there is usually a underlying cause or causes that are a result of, you know, that result in your current situation. So we, we work our, our way back and sometimes, yes, it is investor, um, investor money that is needed. But, or it might be debt that can kind of get you out of your situation. And so we kind of try to, try to examine your situation or understand your situation a lot better to be able to come up with any sort of solution first. And so what we do, I guess, that's really different is that based on your situation, we look at it holistically and kind of see, well, is it a short-term thing? Is it a medium-term thing? Is it a long-term thing? And what's your, your bigger plan? What's your biggest strategy here? And then and we kind of work backwards from, the, from there. So we kind of reverse engineer uh, where you're at at the moment and what you need and, and try and find the solutions that, uh, uh, that you need. And sometimes, so for example, I know you and I have spoken to a couple of businesses that are wanting to grow overseas uh, and they're, you know, their questions or their discussions with us, or at least with me, was about, okay, how do I, I need X amount of millions of dollars to be able to expand overseas. You know, in my conversation or my questions were about, well, why and what do you need it for? And, you know, and we kind of peel back the layers of the onion. And then what we also realize is, yes, they want to expand overseas, but they've also, you know, money isn't necessarily the thing that they need. It's really an, an, an entry into, for example, the US market, the right type of people, the right people who have the connections and, and the money. So that's, you know, that's kind of how we work. We look at it more holistically than uh, here's a solution before we've even examined your situation. There'll be people, founders and CEOs who are listening yep. to the show yes. who are going to want to know and who are going to be very interested to know whether you can help them. Can you mm -hmm. just give me an example of the kind of projects that you help with? You know, what are the, the things, what's the range of stuff that you get involved with? Sure. So the range of things is varied, right? Uh, in terms of why people come to us. Uh, people come to us because, uh, usually they're stuck in some shape or form in terms of where they are, in terms of their growth, in terms of wanting to grow to the next level. Uh, sometimes people come to us because they want to acquire or merge with another company, uh, don't know how to do it or don't know, how, don't know how to get the funding. And so that's where we get involved. Uh, often we get people who yeah, want, to, want to expand overseas or even businesses who want to exit their business but know that it's not worth what it what they need it to be worth if they were to sell it now and so what we also get involved in is, is helping businesses to build their business for a bigger exit and so yeah so if i, I guess you know listeners out there if you, you know if they're wanting to grow if they want to grow quickly or they want to exit or are looking for you know m a uh strategic advice and help then you know we, we can help so, so walk me through that process kind of step by step of, of how you go about figuring out whether a company is a match to work with you, you know, from the time that you first meet somebody. Yeah. How do you, how do the, what's that? Yeah. What are the mechanics of how you actually arrive at that decision of, okay, we're going to work together? 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and you're right, not every business is a good fit for us and we're not a great fit for, for all businesses. From a, a higher level, I mean, the, the, the types of businesses that we tend to do really well with are obviously those businesses who want to and are ready to deal with this. Businesses who aren't kind of contemplating growth, but are actually ready to grow. We find that uh, the businesses who are actually at that point in their lives or in their in their business cycles are ready to go to the next level, and you know that's usually a first criteria is the timing and the and the um, yeah the current situation that they're in uh, is what we look at. Uh, we also uh, look at their their industry. Uh, and our own contacts and our own capabilities and we kind of have the, those initial discussions with them uh, and uh, I mean we first start with a you know like a 15 minute chat over the phone and we kind of introduce ourselves and they introduce themselves and we get a high level kind of understanding of where they're at what they're trying to do and usually within that time frame you know we know whether there'll be some sort of a fit between us and whether or not you know it's worthwhile pursuing it further then from there we kind of have a uh, a more of a longer strategic chat or call or even face to face depending on where you are and we kind of nut it out a lot more and and then we we kind of come to us a, a, a decision point as to whether or not we can help and uh, and leave them at least you know with a plan and direction even if we can't help them and uh, and yeah, I was going to say, apart from, you know, this appetite to grow and a readiness to grow, what are some of the other specific things that you're looking for as you review a company? So usually for us, it's uh, one of our criteria is a revenue size. And, and it's, you know, our sweet spot is between the five to $50 million in revenue. Uh, usually that's, you know, lower middle market is, is our sweet spot. Uh, but in saying that we've worked with smaller businesses and larger businesses. And in fact, we've, we've started to create or I've started to create a program that allows some of the smaller uh, businesses to be involved in growth by mergers and acquisitions as well. So to, you know, in terms of size, uh, we have, I guess, our ideal types of clients, but we also have uh, avenues and options for those who don't. Uh, in terms of the industries, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we've worked with uh, a lot of service-based businesses, manufacturing businesses, wholesalers, importers, um, exporters, you know, electrical infrastructure, uh, businesses who are already overseas and what looking to acquire or expand over into Australasia, we get involved with. So uh, there's no specific criteria of the type of business or the industry of business. It kind of comes down to uh, once we sit down and have a bit of a chat, we'll, we'll understand each other and, and be able to de determine that way. And so once you have worked out that a company is a match to work with you, what are the kinds of things that you can help a company to do so that it can grow faster or or what kind of help do you provide to, to fill gaps where owners might not have the right skills or experience or contacts? Yeah, that's, that's actually another good question. So usually as part of my discussions with the owner and the initial discussions, what I'm trying to figure out is where the gaps are, is to figure out where are the gaps in terms of what the business owner is currently doing at the moment where the gaps are in terms of the opportunities in their, in their market, in their industry, and specifically within their niche. Uh, and, and I'm trying to figure out also where the gaps are in terms of the owner's skill set and capabilities, not just knowledge-wise and, and skill set-wise, but also time-wise. You know, do they have the right team in place? Do they have the right systems in place to a degree? And, uh, and it kind of gives me a better picture and understanding of really where the, like I said, the gaps are within their business and within their own capabilities. If you're enjoying the Business Beyond Borders podcast and you're thinking about expanding your company internationally, check out the Deeran and Associates website, deeranassociates.com. Now you wear two hats, don't you? So you work with NDFC, but you also do something called Grow by Acquisition. Can you yes. tell me about Grow by Acquisition and, and particularly what was it that made you uh, decide to, to create this other program? Yeah. Well, I like I said, I've been uh, helping businesses grow. I mean, the first job out of uni was with a business coaching and consulting company and, um, and I've genuinely enjoy helping people and helping businesses grow. And, you know, 
part of my the things that I've created are online coaching and consulting programs, and uh, you know as I do, um, you know capital raising and mergers and acquisitions for the lower middle market of businesses. What I've found was that some of the smaller businesses weren't able to, I guess, afford our services or you know be able to spend the time with us to be able to grow their business the way that they can or should. Uh, and so I created, I've created a, uh, a program which is essentially an online coaching uh, and consulting program that goes through the systems of how to grow your business through mergers and acquisitions, how to find the right businesses, how to negotiate the right to the right business owners, how to assess them quickly, how to find the funding and, uh, and finance to be able to acquire those uh, and, uh, and learn about it basically how to get your business from where you are to where you need to go from emerges and acquisitions and capital raising point of view. So I've created that because uh, A, it allows us to be able to um, help those who we couldn't help normally. Uh, and it's, it's another way that we can scale our services as well. And we might put a link to that program into the show notes for anybody who wants to find out more about that. Sure. Can we talk about some of the companies that you've helped to, to go global? Sure. And, and how um, you did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, uh, for example, we're working with a company right now. They're uh, an Australian based company. They're involved in infrastructure projects in Southeast Asia. So we're talking, you know, the development of roads and bridges and uh, battery plants and solar stuff and farms, which, uh, goes over my head in terms of the technical side of things. So this company is Australian based, like I said, and uh, part of our role, my role over the over the time has been to uh, a um, do the introductions with some of our network uh, with the Indonesian governments. We, we have direct uh, contact with them, uh, and uh, and basically, a, you know, helping them to sift through the different projects that we can help them get involved with. Yeah, we've helped them to, you know, in terms of introductions to the right private equity investment, boutique investment banks who specialise in infrastructure projects in Southeast Asia. So they approached us um, to be able to help them. And so that's what we've been been able to do. So an Australian company to do um, large scale projects in Southeast Asia. There's uh, digital marketing companies that, uh, that I've worked with, uh, mainly because some of our contacts, both in the US as well as in, in Europe and UK, there are larger uh, companies that want to acquire and expand in, in the Asia PAC region. And so um, a lot of these uh, smaller digital companies uh, I've been helping to grow or advise or, uh, you know, match them with the, with the right types of acquirers who essentially want to grow by acquisition themselves. So, you know, I, I help those types of companies here in Australia to be able to build their business for an exit or even help them to grow by acquisition. There's another company that we're working with at the moment who's another digital agency that wants to grow overseas in the United States. They already have some presence over there and they, um, uh, but they're looking to, to grow, uh, I guess, quicker and more intelligently rather than sort of setting up a, uh, you know, a proper shop up there that we're, we're actually looking at uh, ways to acquire smaller businesses that'll get us foot in the door with, with some of those, uh, with some of those clientele. We, there's another company, which is an FX uh, online company um, that'd be doing in the tens of millions of dollars in revenue. Uh, they approached us to, to raise capital, to acquire another company. It's not too dissimilar to theirs in, uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and we were able to do that. We found the funding. We were able to, to, to help them to, or found that we, we helped them to structure the right way of acquiring it. There's, there's a ton. There's uh, an IT company who wanted to, here in Australia, who wanted to, uh, it was a management buyout. Uh, they want to, obviously the management wanted to acquire the company. We had to go overseas because uh, it was a large transaction of in excess of 55 mil that we needed to raise. Uh, and a lot of the money that we could access of that sort of caliber was overseas. And so we, we uh, tapped to our investment bank uh, network and private equity guys overseas and, and were able to, to kind of come up with some solutions that way. There's, there's a range. There's, uh, yeah, there's a whole range of, of types of businesses. Pretty diverse, isn't it? Yeah, it really is diverse. And so that's kind of why we don't, uh, I don't like to uh, assume a certain industry or type of business because, Again, we don't know whether there'll be 
a, a good match until we start having that conversation, really. Mm. And do you think it's harder to, in general, you mentioned that, you know, to raise large amounts of money, say over $50 million in Australia is difficult. Do you think getting capital in Australia is difficult compared to elsewhere in the world? That's actually a really good point. It has been probably over the last five years or so, it's getting better. But, you know, five, 10 years ago, the Australian market was known to be uh, super, super conservative uh, and really behind in terms of funding and finance and and all the rest. I mean, even if you think about it, you know, the idea of crowdfunding is is relatively new here and the idea of angel investors and VCs has only really popped up in a more, you know, popular way over the past few years. There's obviously, there's always been VC firms and investor groups and all that sort of stuff, but in terms of its popularity and commonness in the market, uh, it, it's only been a, a relatively recent thing. So it is changing, and but it is a lot easier to get out, you know, overseas funding, uh, depending obviously on your project, what you're looking to do. Uh, yeah. It, particularly the States, for example, they're a lot more open and understand, you know, the different ways of making deals happen. So, yeah. And I think in the States, people's attitudes to money are quite different and, and much less conservative. So every good business person goes bankrupt at least a couple of times in the yeah. States, whereas in Australia, if you do it once, that's pretty much the end of you. That's right. That's right. It, it, that's actually a really good point. So that's actually, that's starting to change. I think the, the government have started to in, uh, um, include some, some laws that basically gear us to be more entrepreneurial in that sense. So that we, you know, if a business owner does fail, they can actually, you know, try again. But yeah, in terms of funding and finance and the kind of entrepreneurial way of looking at so, solutions to problems, America is way ahead of us from that point of view. Yeah. Ron, what would you what would you say to companies who are listening to this episode of the show and thinking, yeah, I wouldn't mind having a having a go at growing my business internationally, but mm -hmm. you know, can we really afford to do it? Is it too risky? What what would you say to those people? So that's actually a really good point because Again, if you if you come back to the point that I was making earlier, in the sense that often we're uh, taught to think a certain way, or we've been uh, going down a certain path in terms of how we think. And if we just take a step back and actually ask, hang on a second, why are we thinking of the solution, of that being the solution or having that idea in our head? And that's usually, I guess, where, where we come in and part of the conversation that we normally have initially is to understand the facts of their situation before we kind of come up with a, here's your solution. We need to know, I guess, the better idea, the, a better under, have a better understanding of your current situation. So often when people talk to us, uh, or even when we're just having general conversations with business owners, I find is that people often have a preconceived idea of what it takes to grow, whether it be by acquisition or whether it be to grow overseas. There's a company that I read just recently who wants to grow their, their agency over in the UK and they've budgeted for a million, a million and a half um, just to open up an office and hire staff and all the rest. So they've already gone down that track of here's my solution. Here's my, you know, my ant antibiotic that I'm going to get, right? I know what the solution is. Whereas if you kind of take a step back, there are probably better ways, more, you know, uh, that you haven't even thought about. And so to answer your question, uh, what, you know, if people are, you know, considering, can I expand overseas or how can I have the funding or the, you know, the contacts or the knowledge? First, I would suggest just know what your situation is and start talking to people that may have done that before or may be able to give you some sort of ideas or solutions to be able to, you know, I guess talk it through to see if you, if you can or you can't before you, you kind of go, well, I don't have the money, I don't have the ability, I don't have the contacts because, again, if you peel enough layers back, uh, and find out what the root cause is or what your problem is, there is usually a way that you can find uh, to solve that. And if you're wanting to grow by acquisition and you don't have the funding, don't let that be uh, an issue for you or the major issue for you in terms of progressing any further. Because, yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can uh, fund acquisitions with little or no capital of your own, you know, and it doesn't always have to be all debt. It doesn't always have to be all equity and giving up a big, you know, all, you know, 
hundred percent of your of your equity away or anything like that. There are a lot of different ways, and yeah, you just don't know. So it sounds like what you're saying is that step one in all this is really mindset, and step two is about thinking creatively and outside the square. Yeah, exactly. Because if you accept a certain way of thinking, then you're only ever going to get the same answer. And in terms of, and, and yeah, you're right. That's a mindset thing again as well. And so, yeah, I guess over the years, you, you get to see a lot of different uh, situations that business owners are in and, uh, and you realize that, you know, it doesn't have to be a certain way just because you've, you've, you've had the, you know, a certain business in a certain industry and you haven't seen any similar results to what you want. That doesn't mean that they can't, they can't happen. I, I see that all the time. So yeah, it, it definitely is a mindset thing. It's been great to have you on the show today. Thanks so much for coming along. Pleasure. Thank you. If you're enjoying the Business Beyond Borders podcast and you're thinking about expanding your company internationally, check out the Deeran and Associates website, deeranassociates.com. Our consulting services, which include market research and modeling, cross-cultural consulting and strategic business connections, deliver deep insights and create value for larger companies looking to scale internationally. If you're from a smaller organization that wants to expand its global footprint, take a look at our International Business Accelerator Program, which my team and I created to help micro to medium-sized businesses to speed up and de-risk the process of going global. The program helps business owners to build a great strategy without having to reinvent the wheel. It creates the momentum to put the strategy into play and it helps them to generate or raise the funds that they need to get an international expansion off the ground. We built it especially for founders and CEOs who want to take their business to the next level and wondering where to start. It's structured in a way that's simple to follow. It's digital so that you can take part from anywhere in the world. It's a lot of fun and our members love it. Check it out at dearandassociates.com.